Well, do you have black, dark stains on your ceilings, on your walls, on your carpets, at the corners of your carpeted rooms and closets? Are the lines dark, straight lines? Are they dots? Where are these dark black stains coming from? We're going to explain this uh, today uh, in this short video. Um, so let's go to our slideshow. So black stains, dark stains, ghosting stains, all right? And uh, we're going to talk about that. So usually you'll see them, you know, on rafters, carpets, fireplaces, tops of water heaters, um, furnace front covers, garage walls. These are just some of the areas. Um, and there's a little diagram and it explains. So when you move pictures, you can see them as well. Um, we're going to show you some pretty cool examples here in a second. Um, what causes these stains? Well, you got to have some driving forces, uh, impaction, forced air, heating systems sometimes help it out. Gravity, you know, sometimes the particles are heavy and they drop or settle out or plate out. And sometimes they're charged up and they attract. So impaction just basically means if you've got your furnace running and there's particles floating around in the air, as the air moves, sometimes it will push the particles uh, into an area and they'll stain there, okay? And you have different types of, uh, of pattern staining we'll talk about. Now, when you see the stains underneath the carpets, well, you know, what's causing the soot? We're going to talk about that, the number one and number two and number three reasons for these black stains. But if you have stains under the doors, that means that your heating system is imbalanced. So you may not have a cold air return in that room. And so it's just blowing air, and the air's got to go underneath the door. And the carpet is just like a filter, and it, it picks up the soot stains and the dirt and the debris. Um, so you want to maybe, if that's an issue in your house, figure out uh, maybe you need to add cold air returns or maybe they're blocked by furniture. Maybe you just got to keep the door open. Um, sometimes you'll see them here, okay, along the carpets, along the edges. And that, again, means that maybe when they built your house, they didn't seal the bottom plates. So air is floating, uh, air is, you know, uh, escaping in or going out. Also, you could have ductwork underneath here or in the wall or cold air returns that don't have ductwork. So you have what's called interstitial uh, uh, depressurization. So here, you move the cart, uh, the box out of the closet and you see this, <laughs> you see this big stain here. Well, you know, basically that means the carpet is sucking all around it. And why would it be sucking? Probably because in the basement, there's a cold air return. And guess what? They don't really duct cold air returns. So it's just running through the wood, through the joists. Okay, and there, it looks like there's metal there, but it's only on the bottom of, the, of your joist. So that means that this is sucking air, okay? And, and so we could still have these problems, but now we're going to have to figure out what is causing the soot and what is generating the soot. Here's another one. You move the box, and it just, I don't know, if, if you're going to be able to clean this carpet, you can try. Um, but it's hard. Here's the door again, you know, negative positive pressures. Now look at this guy. He had a lot of boxes. And when he moved out, he had this, like, pattern. Uh, and he basically had an incomplete combustion problem in the house. Uh, carpets will, will get darker over time and stain, okay, and especially around the edges. When they stain on the edges, that's telling me a few different things. It's telling me that... Maybe that we don't have good insulation. Maybe we don't have weather stopping under the joists when they built the house. And the older houses don't have that. So, you know, we've got air leakage for sure, you know. And, and also now we've got a soot generator. Uh, again, when you pull up the register covers, same kind of thing. There it is. So the number one cause of staining, we're going to go to number two, three, and maybe four, okay. But jar candles. You see, jar can this isn't a jar candle, but as a candle burns down, uh, it loses, it uses up its oxygen. And the farther down it goes into the, into the candle, the wick goes down, usually in jar candles, there's no oxygen. 
So what happens is the candle is actually burning incomplete. It has incomplete combustion. So when you have incomplete combustion because there's not enough oxygen because it's used it up in the jar candles, it always does, then you create soot and you create carbon monoxide. Okay, maybe not enough carbon monoxide to make you sick, but these are your byproducts. And the number one byproduct is soot. And the micron size of soot is so small that it just floats and it can float around in your house for weeks at a time. And so the jar candles for sure are major soot producers, okay? Okay, so you have big particles, you know, like skin, you know, skin flakes, and this stuff isn't going to stick to the wall. If this is going to, this kind of stuff might make you sneeze, you know. Then you got medium, you know, like uh, small ones, like if you have pets and you have high humidity in carpets, then you got fecal pellets. And those are smaller and they break up into fragments and insect fragments. And those kind of maybe get down in your nostrils a little bit lower. You know, you get asthma and things like that. They settle out, you know, maybe five minutes, okay. However, the small particles, they, 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 they can settle uh, much like let's just say a minute to 10 minutes to an hour like cat dander tobacco smoke but a lot of the soot particles can just float around and if, if the, you open a door it, it picks up again so these are such small particles uh, that they'd stay in your house until they stick to something and usually they'll stick to cold surfaces now they will stick to carpets we showed you the carpets um, where there was like uh, negative pressures or cold air returns or cold areas soot will tend to play it out on cold surfaces it's called brownian motion and so brownian motion basically means that the soot particles they move pretty quickly you know in the air and then the wind's blowing and the heating system is blowing and the fans blowing and the doors open and they're just moving around but the minute it gets to a colder surface let's say this is a wall okay a wall and as they're moving around quickly, and there's a cold surface here, they move around quickly, they slow it up, and they stick to it. It's called, they played out, okay? And they always played out between, between the walls where the joists are at and the studs because between the joists and studs, it's warmer, right? Because there's insulation there. But the stud, the piece of wood that goes to the outside wall is colder. That's kind of what they call a thermal bridge. So it's about, you know, it could be a couple degrees colder than in between the wall. So that's why you get the lines. It's called impaction through Brownian motion. And, and you'll see here in this picture here where you can see the stain. See them? And these are your rafters, okay? And you can see all the wood. It's like a skeleton. Now, sometimes here, if you have high humidity, you could make a mistake. And this could actually be mold. And so you've got to know the difference between stains and mold. So if there's high humidity, you'll generally see condensation on your windows. And it's not the candles now. It's a mold thing. So now we have a whole different issue. And I have other videos on that. Like this right here. Okay. This is mildew because of high humidity. See, the, plus it's cold. So the, not only does a cold temperature attract the dust particles from incomplete combustion like soot from a candle. And we're going to show you two, three, and four here in a second, the other more dangerous ones. But also, if there's a humidifier going on or a crawl space, you know, that's wet or a basement that leaks or or let's say you've got ductwork underneath your slab that's got water in it, okay, or you've got 100 plants or you cook all day long, you know. So these things can cause, and usually it'll be on the north side because the north side's colder. Northeast corner is the coldest, so that's where you go look for mold. If you want to look for mold in a house, go to your basement, go, go up to the rafters if you can get to them, go to the northeast corner, pull out the insulation. That's where you want to see if there's mold there on the banjois pocket. If you've got a humidity problem, you need to control the humidity. Now, this house here was one of these pellet burning stoves. And, you know, they this thing was had incomplete combustion. And for some reason, you don't have a good burn with this stuff. And they had black stains throughout the house. And here's what happens with people that have wood burners and pellet burners. They, they want to save money. So what they do is they, they turn off the furnace or they turn it down or they close their rooms off like, oh, I'm not heating those rooms. I'm not paying for that room. So I'm burning wood, and it's great. You know, well, what happens is because of that, those are the rooms that are going to get stained because they're cold. And if you have a fireplace that's not really venting properly or you have incomplete combustion, like, for example, this stove, 
or you have a problem with gas-fired uh, fireplaces or propane fireplaces that don't have good combustion. In other words, let's say the burners are dirty or not properly adjusted or you know, they don't meet the design of the logs that you're using, you're going to create dark yellow, red type flames. Not a blue, a blue flame is like pure combustion and the yellow flame is more like, hey, you know, it's not burning that good. That means you're generating carbon monoxide and you're generating carbon dioxide, which all combustion systems do, but also soot. So, so this thing, so another, uh, we talked about the candles. Now, the kind of candles, I don't have a picture of one here, um, but the vertical candles that you would, let's say, the wax candles, the beeswax candles, those don't have glass, you know, like the church candles. Those are okay, but there's a problem. If you put them in an area where you walk by and the flame flickers, guess what? Incomplete combustion, boom, soot, soot, little parks, little soot. But if you could keep that candle burning perfectly, nicely, it's not going to generate as much soot. So turbulent homes and candles, very bad idea. Also, the newer homes that are so tight, very bad idea for using candles. I would say don't use candles. Here you could see this jar candle. You could see all the soot you know, around the jar candle because as it, as it burns down, it gets worse, and that's where you start to ruin your house. Okay, And so jar candles are a bad idea. I know it's a billion-dollar industry, you know, but so is the paint industry. So I don't know, maybe the paint people and the candle people, are, I don't know, maybe they're in cahoots here, okay? And I know that candles look great and people love the way they smell. Now, you know, some of the people buy candles because, oh, that smells so clean, it's fresh. It's not fresh. There's nothing fresh about odor that a candle produces. It's generally, most of the time, it's not a natural thing. It's a chemical. And so all those odors that you're using with air fresheners and when you burn candles, <laughs> it's poison, man. I don't know what else to tell you. It's poison. So I would say stay away from that. I'd rather have a house that smells than have a house that smells pretty that's full of poison. So I would be careful with the candles. Um, and so here's some more soot stains. And, you know, like if, if uh, um, there's home inspectors that can figure this out for you and there's YouTube videos. If you're in a Cleveland area, um, I've been doing, you know, inspecting now, I don't know, 33 years full time. I've done 18,000 inspections. So, you know, we do stuff locally and we travel a little bit, not too far. But, you know, if you do have a house problem, something that you can't figure out, we'll figure it out for you. We do, we do it on the phone. We have this, this service called Call Marco with a question. Google it, Marco's with a K. And there's a little fee, and within like usually 15 minutes to half an hour, maybe you know, I ask you to send me some pictures. Maybe we've got to make two phone calls out of it. But I'm probably at a 97% uh, success rate. So I've done pretty much odors and noises and shocks and stains, structural problems, settlement bugs, you know. So um, I do provide that service. I'll leave some links below. Another thing you want to get... Um, like here, 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 this again is the impaction of, of the of the walls. And look at that. I mean, you got to repaint that. Most of the time, you got to wash it, okay, and then you got to prime it, and then you got to paint it. But then a lot of people can't figure out what it's from, and they burn the candles again. This is a thermal image, and, and the thermal image basically shows you and predicts if you burned a candle in this particular home, and left it going for a while, this is what your wall would look like. It wouldn't be blue. Okay, and you can see here the electrical outlets. The outlets sometimes get dark. You never see electrical outlets with the black stains coming out. Same kind of thing. It's cold air, you know, and it gets dirty, and it impacts right there. Okay, we do a lot of consulting. So churches will call us up and say, why is our church staining? Well, <laughs> you got to get rid of the candles. Try to tell a church... No more candle burning. See how far that goes. So you got to figure things out. So, you know, you have to tell them, listen, you know, where are you going to burn the candles? we got to design, you know, a thermal bridge condition, bring a, like a superficial wall there so this doesn't happen. And so sometimes you cannot, you know, say don't burn candles because churches need candles, okay, to burn. That's part of their uh, the religion. Now, this one here is different. This is called wind washing. It's not candle burning. 
it is moisture but here it's it's called wind washing when you got a house with big soffits and the wind blows the insulation go in your attic and check it out there's probably no insulation right there so areas that have stains like this in attics mean there's no insulation insulate it it'll help out okay there's more vertical stains that's insulation missing here here are your lights the lights provide a little bit of heat in the in this part here is a little bit colder and there it is impaction that's a candle burning there okay this one here you could actually see the nails the nails are cold right because they go through the wood this is what they nail the drywall to and it's colder and that's where impacts you can see the nails a lot of times in the drywall now this is different okay this is the opposite okay now this is a garage so in a garage you could have incomplete combustion from a bad garage heater or a propane heater now these are very dangerous so this is not candle burning this was uh, gas consumption fuel heating now what happens here is the opposite. Think about this. There's no insulation in the garage because it wasn't insulated. And these are thermal, these are the joists. And they ha and so it's actually colder here than here. And guess what? Look where it's, it does it the opposite. Instead of, instead, of, instead of plating out here, it plates out in between. And you can see how dark this is. And there's another garage and another garage. Okay, and that was the wind washing. Okay, and so now this kind of stain, well, <laughs> This isn't either or. This is actually worse. This is smoking stains. And you can see smoke stains are completely different. And we, in cleaning smoke stains, you can see this poor guy's trying to wash them off. And it's very difficult. So it, we're going to say maybe in newer tight homes, stay away from candles. So now let's, let's go to um, the, the other things that cause these stains, all right? And so I got my little book reader here. Okay, so... Okay, now, if your water heater, let's say you don't have a stain problem, you're not burning wood, you know, you don't have a fireplace, you're not spilling, you know, you're not, uh, uh, you don't have one of those uh, propane heaters, right? So, you, you know, you're not doing any of that. You're not burning food in the kitchen. You know, you're doing everything right. Well, let's go to the water heater. So, now, let's look at the water heater. Now, obviously, you're not going to have these gauges to test all this, but... Put, look at your water heater and see if it's rusted on the top. If it is, then you've got spillage, and that can be a problem. That can cause the soot. Look at the bottom of the water heater where, where the uh, burner goes into and see if that's dark and stained and rusted. Okay, that could be a problem. The furnace is another one. Okay, you know, you're not going to test the seal levels in the furnace, but go look at that furnace. Take a quick look at it and take the cover off and see if the cover's stained. Is it rusted? Look at the back of the furnace. See if there's like, if it's back drafting. Okay, you can, like if there's back drafting, then you want to for sure go test your furnace. Go get it tested by an expert. And you might have to do a combustion analysis, okay, because you can't have a furnace that has an in, improper combustion. The other things that can cause, that can cause uh, soot are not just gas furnaces, but oil furnaces, right? Um, stoves, gas stoves that have that have incomplete combustion. Let's say the burners are properly adjusted and the regulator, there's something wrong with it. You know, toasting, I don't know, you know, fireplaces for sure. Dryer vents have a whole different kind of problem, but the dryer vent is actually an exhaust vent in a gas system. So if you get incomplete combustion, that can cause it. But th these aren't that uh, as as uh, frequent as the uh, the candles, okay? And so, you know, there's also different things that you could have problems with, okay, on your furnaces. You could have drafting issues, um, wind issues that can cause this, okay? Lack of combustion air, you know, under firing in the furnace, okay? We're going to get kind of technical here, drafting, you know, and so these are a little bit more technical. I think at this point, you might have to watch one of my other videos that gets into incomplete combustion of furnaces, draft testing of furnaces, and maybe you could learn from those videos. We're not going to get into that because this is mostly, I would say, 90, uh, 99, eh, maybe not 99, I'll say 95%, okay? 95% of the time, it's going to be <laughs> burning candles. Uh, you know, well, let's make it 90%. And the other 9% is going to be maybe your fireplace uh, is downdrafting. And, uh, you know, incense, you know, it's not like you can, 
Incense can do it too if you like have incense in one area. Uh, the air fresheners can do it, you know. So um, I would say in newer homes, be very careful with with uh, candles. Don't buy candles that that have you know uh, scents to them. Uh, if you're gonna do candles, get beeswax. Stay away from jar candles. If you must have a candle, put it in an area where it's not gonna flicker, where there's not gonna be any air movements, and maybe spend money on a good you know beeswax type candle and again don't use it all the time don't burn it all the time because that stuff doesn't disappear it ends up on your walls and on your carpets so check out some of the links below um, please watch more of our videos and rate and subscribe thank you